This right. isn't drinking water. You can't. You couldn't. This isn't potable water yet, though. Right? No, it's not yeah. potable water. It's the water that otherwise is discharged. It meets EPA standards for that that use. Mm -hmm. So what what about this idea that we uh, recycle the water to drinking water standards and maybe tap into our sewage and 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 some of that you know the yuck factor that that we saw in that video? Well, we haven't had to do that in this community to date. Uh, and these gentlemen are involved in some of those projects out west, and they can tell you why communities go to that. But it has been brought up, and the city of Tampa has discussed it, and it's something to discuss, because when you spend $300 million or $500 million and put a lot of money into it, you may not want to throw that water away anymore. And right now we throw it away into Tampa. Essentially 60% gets recycled and, and about 40% gets put into Tampa Bay, is that right? Correct. Yeah. Andy, uh, are you are you familiar with projects out west? Absolutely. And, yeah, and, yeah. And so, and how are how are the citizens taking to it? It depends. Yeah. It, it really depends it, how how informed they are on what they're dealing with, and and then the technologies, as York mentioned, they're all in place to. There's you know we have a series of technologies that mimic nature but do it faster, mm -hmm. and then we have a series of technologies that go one step further. And in the, the one of the videos mentioned reverse osmosis, and there's fancy. A UV and all these other things, ozone, and and these uh, do a fantastic job of essentially taking everything in that water and making it too, as Bart said, too pure to drink. Where we actually have to put stuff back in it uh, to make it make it acceptable. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's but it's a matter of of letting the pe the people know the high level of treatment and and the high quality that's coming from that but it is widely used. York, what's the alternative if if people out west uh, don't recycle uh, their their sewage water in the projects that you're familiar with mm -hmm. where do they get the water from if they can't do that? Well th in, in some cases they don't have another choice um, or they have to uh, look for water way in, 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 in significant distances away um, so they have to import water through uh, uh, pipelines, which makes it very expensive, and other communities don't want to let that water go. Right. So um, that might cause some tension. We could also, in coastal uh, settings, envision ocean desalination, uh, which isn't cheap either. So um, this recycled water really has one big benefit. It's at your fingertip. So it's there. You, it's a local resource, and as Bart pointed out, it, it definitely makes sense to use it one, uh, more than once. Has there ever been a breakdown in the system where something got through that made people sick? I mean, one of the diseases that's associated with, uh, with uh, treated sewage water, or are these systems fairly safe at this point in our history? Yeah, I'll take the first one on that. I, there, there's no evidence of any kind of public health issue. If you look on the drinking water side, and, and we do a fantastic job of treating drinking water in this country, there have been de uh, cases where you've seen uh, a breakdown in the treatment process. On the uh, reclaimed water side, it, maybe it's because we've learned our lessons, but there are a series of processes and monitoring that, that are in play that we work real hard to, to uh, keep these barriers up for public health protection, so we haven't seen it. Yeah. Uh, Bart, is there a p potential here, I mean, the, the, the growth has slowed down in Florida because of the recession, but a few years ago as growth was steamy ahead, people were talking about uh, building a pipeline up to the Suwannee River, taking some of that water uh, to uh, Central and South Florida, use that freshwater supply. Are, are we, uh, can you envision down the road that we might have uh, our own version of a statewide water war where water rich counties in the north are trying to protect uh, their fresh water from water poor counties in the south? Uh, absolutely, it could happen. The laws have to change because right now we're under a uh, local sources first rule by the legislature where you can't go beyond your boundaries unless you've used absolutely all the water in your area and it's been pretty much prohibitive to go too far. However, in the central part of the state, that's probably the first test case, and they call it the Kafka, and they're moving out from Orlando farther and farther to get water for the growing population of Orlando. Mm -hmm. Bart, let me ask you another question. Uh, if we have to pay, the, you brought this up a moment ago, if we have to pay to clean this water, is it smart to throw it away? And what are the options if, if we say well, we're spending all this money, um, what else could we do with it besides uh, putting 40% of it back into Tampa Bay? Well, it's, it's never smart to throw it away. And we now use what we can use um, economically. We have been in this game or, or had reclaimed water production and customers since the 80s. 
we've used uh, as much as we can to the point where we dr run out of reclaimed water in the dry season. So now we're faced with having to store the water, store the rainfall and the water that we receive in the wet season for more use in the dry season. We're at a point where we're having trouble bringing on uh, additional customers, not only because of the limitation of the reclaimed water, but also because of the cost. And uh, the, the cost has become a significant burden or issue to advance reclaimed water systems. Mm -hmm. We, we've been talking about these new EP regulations. When do they actually begin to govern us? When, by what date do we have to make sure that the treated wastewater that, that we are putting back into, for instance, Tampa Bay, uh, meets drinking water standards? What's the, what's the deadline? The rule was proposed in January, and it will be adopted in October, pending no delays. And Thereafter, we generally believe that you'll have five years to comply. So we will have some time, but it takes generally five years to design, permit, and put into operation any type of treatment system because it's a long task to make to look at the water quality, fit, as, as these gentlemen have said, the right treatment for that water quality and for your use and do it economically, as economically as possible. And Andy and York, any other ideas about what to do with our, I mean, how are other communities using their uh, reclaimed water if they're treating it to drinking water standards? How are, what kind of innovative ideas are out there to, to uh, reuse this water? Well, there are a lot of options you have. I mean, you can think of irrigation, which is the most uh, common one to, to recycle water. Um, of cooling water, of groundwater recharge, and in coastal settings we're faced with seawater intrusion, um, and you can definitely do go to drinking water. So mm -hmm. those are uh, ideas, and I think it, it really um, illustrates that there's a whole portfolio of uh, options out there uh, where you could use recycled water for. Andy? I, I just want to point out, it, it really appears to me that some of these low nutrient standards are, are, are uh, Florida is, 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 is really, uh, how do I say this, is at the forefront of some of these low nutrient standards. And that's better. And, and so when we talk about reclaimed water use across the, the country, there is these high levels of treatment that will meet these nutrient standards, and those are all used for potable, uh, augmenting the potable supply. Mm -hmm. uh, the, uh, the issue of, of uh, alternative uses, uh, such as ag and, and turf and dual plumbing in, a, in, in, in buildings, et cetera, uh, those are all done typically with a water that is, is protectable public health, but not treated to that high that level high and to that high cost. Yeah. And, 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 and Bart, just real quickly, because we've got to go back to the video, and that is that we saw the sinkholes created uh, in the year, early part of this year uh, as we were going through uh, a freeze crisis and the farmers in the eastern part of the county were pumping a lot of groundwater to protect their crops. Neighbors were losing their, their wells, their drinking water wells. We saw sinkholes created. So this idea that York mentioned of using it for agriculture might be a way to, could it be a way to solve that problem? Um, a partial way, but realize we use most of our water. And if you're talking about Plant City and you're talking about where that crop is grown um, locally, we don't have enough water to supplement them. Uh, and they need their water, they need a lot of water in a short period of time, uh, mainly in the freeze events is when you're talking about it. So we couldn't supply the water they need at that point. And uh, it, water in agriculture, has, uh, reclaimed water in agriculture has been accepted in, in the West, but hasn't grant, gained the acceptance here as of yet. Okay. Well, maybe we should consider using whatever water we have in whatever way we want because it's getting harder and more expensive to get the water we need to start with. Let's see what Carter says about recycling water again and again and again. 